One of the most unusual cases which Sherlock Holmes was ever called upon to solve began in a small private school for boys in the north of Belgium. The boys' dormitory at four in the morning, lighted by a full moon, looked quiet and peaceful. It would have been difficult to imagine that here began a train of events which filled four graves before it was stopped. gone out. Didn't you try to stop him? I called his name. Either he did not hear or pretended not to. I was afraid to startle him. Is there nothing wrong? No. Nothing, Antoine. Go back to sleep. What are you going to do? The police? It will be the end of my career. It will have to close the school. Send the boy away? Would that stop it? I suppose not. It's horrible. Three deaths in three months. Each one fought all by the writing on the church steps. I still think the police... No. But your own life. I've never felt in better health. And if I'm careful to keep out of drafts and avoid falling downstairs. How can you joke at a time like this? There's a man in London. 
He solved cases even more hopeless than this. Sherlock Holmes? You thought of him? Let me write to him. And ask him to do what? To come here, investigate. Find out who is responsible for those deaths and how a schoolboy can tell in advance who is next to die. And have the school invaded? Our teachers questioned? Our boys terrorized? I'll do my own investigating, Mr. Gown. In my own way. Some weeks later, a letter arrived at Baker Street. Holmes read it over once to himself, and then aloud to me. Dear sir, it will be a source of eternal regret to me that I allowed myself to be dissuaded from writing to you sooner, Mr. Holmes. Now Mr. Carolan is dead of natural causes, the doctor says, though I am not sure he isn't mistaken. I pray that you will come to Arno without delay and lend us your assistance in putting an end to these ghastly occurrences. Respectfully yours, Marie Grand. You deduce that the writer of the letter was young? I go further than that. I'm prepared to wager that she's madly attractive to boot. Mm -hmm. Better and better. And on what do you base these interesting conclusions? Wishful thinking, my dear chap. Wishful thinking. Then wish no more. She is both young and attractive. With hair the color of autumn honey. Oh, did you read that between the lines? No. This came with the letter. Uh -huh. A lovely color, you'll admit, Watson. And from a beautiful young woman at that. Hmm. Now, come, come, Holmes. That's neither logical nor factual. And you know it. You aren't the only one privileged to think wishfully, my dear Watson. <laughs> Bravo. So you're going to take the case? Yes, and if you pack for us both, I'll arrange for tickets. Mm -hmm. The boat train took us to Dover. By mid-morning the following day, Holmes and I were sitting in the headmaster's study at the Arno School in the presence of Mademoiselle Marie Grand, who was indeed extremely attractive, with hair the exact shade of autumn honey. Then you're quite sure you've told me everything, Mademoiselle Grand? There is only the matter of the old woman, but I don't think it's important. Well, let me be the judge of that, Mademoiselle. Her name is Madame Sully. She's a harmless, feeble-minded woman who sells charms and love filters for the ignorant. Some have called her a witch. I see. And what is her part in this affair? She admits she went to see those whose names were written on the church steps and uh, offered to sell them some charms against the evil omen. That's most interesting. Did any of the other victims purchase these charms? I can only speak for Monsieur Carolin. He did not. Mm hmm. And what about the others? Were they persons of wealth? No. Two were quite poor. The third one moderately well off. We have no really wealthy people here in Arno, Mr. Holmes. Except, of course, the Count de Passevent. You know the Count? No, indeed. I only happened to pass uh, a carriage on the way, boasting his coat of arms. However, I should like to have a word with this Madame Soule, if that can be arranged. You have only to go to her house. It's on the edge of town, on the north road. Monsieur Manelli, this is Monsieur Holmes and his friend, Dr. Watson. Monsieur Manelli, our new headmaster. How do you do? How do you do? Now that you're here, Mr. Holmes, we have hopes at last of getting to the bottom of this terrible affair. Thank you, sir. I can only hope to do my best. Mademoiselle Grand has given you all the facts? All the facts at her command. Uh, perhaps you can supply some additional ones. I am sorry, no. Mademoiselle Grand was the favorite member of the faculty here. She had Monsieur Carolan's confidence, not I. I see. And now that I've had the honor of meeting you gentlemen, I hope you will forgive me if I go to meet my class. But certainly. By the way, mademoiselle, Dr. Dimanche is waiting in the vestibule. 
Did you send for him? Yes, I did. I'll go and fetch him. I'll be back directly. 